Hi, y'all. We're excited to have you here. We want to welcome you to Flatiron School's Tech in 20, uh, Motivation of Design, Engagement, and Wellbeing in Digital Experience. My name is Corey Mickelson, and I am the Marketing Events Coordinator here with Flatiron School. A big part of my job is hosting free introductory workshops to give you all the opportunity to meet some of our instructors and get a better feel of the Flatiron experience, as well as these Tech in 20s, which is our way to talk about hot topics within the tech industry. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our host for the evening, Joshua Robinson. He is the Director of Curriculum for Product Design here at Flatiron. Take it away, Joshua. Thank you so much, Corey. And it is uh, really lovely to be here this evening. Very glad to hear that you're getting the moisture that you need from the uh, rain there in Austin. So i um, excited that that's happening. Uh, as Corey mentioned, I am the director of the product design program here at Flatiron School, and thus I do a lot of thinking about how to keep students motivated, how to keep them interested, how to keep them going through the program. I've also been a UX designer, UX strategist, and a UI designer. Uh, in previous careers. So I think a lot about human psychology and human behavior and how we engage with our digital products and how we design products that are uh, that are ethical, inclusive, accessible, and that promote digital well-being and promote uh, anti-harm, right? So to start off with, I want you to take about 20 seconds. I'm going to actually sit in silence. And I want you to think about the last time you set a goal and then you abandoned it part of the way. Okay, hopefully you have a goal in mind. Now, think about why you abandoned the goal. Was it the wrong goal in the first place? Maybe you needed to achieve smaller goals first in order to get to the larger goal. Maybe you just lost interest. Here's the funny thing. Many times when we abandon our goals, due to lack of interest, we tell ourselves a story about maybe it wasn't the right goal to begin with, or there were other external constraints that prevented you. If you just had more time, if your job hadn't gotten in the way, etc., etc. There's really only two main things that I want you to take away from this short session. The first thing I want you to take away is the idea that we only learn about what we're interested in. Learning could be defined as the process of remembering that which you are interested in. So where I live here in Chicago, there's this multi-level parking garage. Nothing, nothing special about it. It's, it's nothing, you know, uh, amazing. It's just a regular old garage. It's kind of actually creepy, like most parking garages are. But the one thing that's interesting is that it uses the names of countries instead of numbers to denote each level in the garage. So in the elevator, the buttons are labeled France or uh, Greece, Turkey, Germany, etc. Each one in a different typeface. And in that elevator lobby on each floor, they play the national anthem of the country through a speaker. Now, why is that interesting? Well, parking garages do not inspire the imagination of the public, right? But foreign countries do. As a result, people don't forget where their cars were parked. We only learn about what we're interested in. Learning can be defined as the process of remembering what you're interested in. The second thing I want you to take away from the short session is that motivation energizes learning and it sustains learning. Learning requires persistence and re-engagement over time. Now, 
here's what's really interesting about motivation. Motivation is sufficient to begin a learning activity, but not to stay engaged with it. So if you want to stay motivated over time, you have to experience interest. And eventually you come up against a barrier that makes you lose interest or a constraint that you're not able to sustain motivation. Experiencing interest is like a platform or a bridge that actually gets you over and past the constraint of that barrier. And here's the other thing, the same strategy that helps you in one circumstance is not necessarily going to help you in a different one. So just because it's the same goal you're going after, it doesn't mean you'll have the same reaction at a different time. So what does all that mean? Well, to be effective, a person must learn to recognize what motivates them at a particular point in time because it changes depending on the context. If a person sees a goal as valuable, such as being able to program, learning product design, learning a brand new board game, if they see it as valuable, but they don't think they can achieve it, for example, the assignment will be too hard, the board game will be boring, there's no payoff, then they're going to have low motivation. Likewise, a person who thinks they could reach the goal, but doesn't think it's a useful goal to have, would also have lower motivation. So what we need are two things to be true. You need to value the goal and you have to believe you can achieve it. Now, how do we relate that to product design? So I've been talking about interest and motivation when it comes to learning something, but what if we apply those same ideas to the products we design? So what are some reasons that people abandon certain products for better alternatives? Well, I would say it's similar to the reasons that we abandon a learning goal. We don't think it's a reasonable effort to attain the goal, or it's no longer a valuable goal to attain. So take the example here of Microsoft Word on the left and a competitor called Notion. Many users swapped from Microsoft Word to Notion because Notion lowered the barriers to being able to design professional, good-looking, nice layouts with your documents and it added new and additional functionality without increasing the complexity and the clutter. Rather than putting up barriers, which then required people to bring interest and motivation to stay interested in Microsoft Word, right? Notion gave them a different goal. It gave them a different reason. Or you could take a traditional thermostat versus a Nest learning thermostat. So in this case, Nest didn't give you just a slightly better way for customers to attain a goal of adjusting the temperature. Nest made it obvious everyone had the wrong goal. So Nest doesn't just give you a slightly better way to adjust the temperature. It changed the goal. Nest says your goal should be comfortable without ever having to think about or adjust the temperature. You see the difference? So when it comes to product design, it's important that we keep innovating and we keep users interested and motivated. And sometimes that looks like improving things with a better user experience, but sometimes it might mean changing the goal entirely. So what are the practical strategies 
that we can use if we have goals, whether it's a learning goal, goal to eat healthier, whatever the personal goal is. Well, I've already told you it's going to be different for every person and you're going to need multiple strategies because what interests you and motivates you at one point in time is not the same thing that might interest and motivate you at a later point in time or a new context. So what the journey might look like through a software engineering school or a product design school. As you come up against those constraints, you come up against those hurdles, use interest and use motivation to sustain your learning towards the goal. And because it will change over time, you need to have multiple strategies. So for one user or one person, one student, it might look like committing to do a presentation once a month to her class or cohort. For another, it might look like committing to do a weekly networking event. For another, it might be embracing a practice of daily meditation. For another, it might look like improving their drawing and sketching ability and doing a daily 10 minute exercise that keeps the motivation and interest high. And then later on, it might be committing to and attending a hackathon or having a journaling daily reflection practice at the end of each day, reflecting on what they learned through the day and establishing that good learning habit. These types of things, these multiple strategies across time will help get you over those barriers of imposter syndrome, the negative voices that tell you you can't do it, it's not the right goal, you're not gonna be able to attain it. The fog that comes with information overload. You need different strategies across time in order to keep interest and motivation. So I'll end by telling you about this painter, Joseph E. Joachim. Joseph E. Joachim was a retired veteran and he traveled all over the world with the army and at age 71, he began a daily practice of sketching these really interesting line art drawings and dreamscapes. He sketched his dreams a lot. He did this for 10 years. He showed up and did a sketch every day for 10 years. And he produced more than 2,000 of these line drawings. Well, in 1972, one month before Joseph Joachim perished, he had a one-man show at the Whitney Museum in New York City. And he had no formal training as an artist. But he kept interest and he kept motivated and just showed up day after day for 10 years producing these drawings. So. I'll leave you with this last thought. It's a quote by Alvin Toffler. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or cannot write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you for listening in. Um, would love to open up the Q&A if you have questions, if you have responses or thoughts, please go ahead and uh, hit that tab. Click that down at the bottom of your screen there, Q&A. Um, I would also love if you posted some of the strategies that you use to keep interest and motivation high on your way to a goal. Everyone has different strategies that they use. So I'd love to know what some of those are. You could paste them in the chat or you could open up the Q&A. I'm also going to drop a link for our next product design event. It's going to be part two of a six part series. It's called Ladders 
um, frames and fishtails. All right, thank you. So Edward, yeah, get in touch with someone else who has the same or similar goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, having accountability with a peer, uh, stating your goal out loud to someone, uh, research shows that you are more likely to keep motivated towards that goal if you externalize it in some way and if you put it out there to maybe a Slack group or uh, a Facebook group or something, right? If people have seen it and know that you've committed to it, you're more likely to sustain motivation. Also, uh, this is why coaching is so popular, right? Mentor, mentorship and coaching uh, services, I think over the past 10 years, uh, have become more and more prominent. Um, obviously, we know all about like sports coaching and personal coaching and things like that, but there's a lot more coaching services now available just for uh, for business, for software engineering. Um, you can sign up for services where you meet with a coach who will keep you motivated. Yes, Edward, agreed. They can do yes and with you, right? So they can extend your learning, extend your understanding by adding on to, by yes anding. And that's that's actually a part of human psychology, right? I was talking about how uh, interested I was in that. Um, you know, our brains search for patterns. We're always trying to find information foraging. We're trying to close loops. We're trying to find like the pattern. So to have someone else to yes and and extend your conversation, right? Uh, it, I think it has something to do with like the dopamine in our brain. <laughs> we just we're naturally drawn to continue to engage and stay interested in what the next thing is or find what the pattern is. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for responding. You look at your end goals and do little things each day. Yeah, so chunking out. Sometimes meditation, sometimes reading, drawing, talking with mentors. Exactly, yeah. And um, it's unfortunate. Sometimes we see students come into our programs and they will drop off those things that are working for them in their daily life because they think, well, now I'm in this new program. I'm in this new school. I don't have time for those. But they really forget that those practices, those habits that they're already attuned to are going to be the things that get them over those hurdles. Yeah, that's a really, just really good. Uh, Darvis, thank you. When the goal is bigger than you and will change lives, absolutely. Uh, you know, the altruism effect is, is real. Um, I, I think that's a huge motivator. Motivation fades, but if you have discipline, that will go a long way. Certainly, that's just like uh, Mr. Joachim, who every day drew, right? There was, I'm certain there were times when he completely lost interest uh, or motivation, but he established a habitual rhythm. Um, if you're interested, the book Atomic Habits is a, is a wonderful uh, guide through that idea that it's... Um, if I could summarize the, that whole book in just a single uh, sentence or phrase, it would be that the act itself of showing up every day generates motivation, not the other way around, right? It's it, counterintuitively, we often think that we need to be motivated first and then we'll show up and practice learning to code or practice. No, it's the other way. It's the practice, the daily small habits is generative. It generates motivation. So I think, Darvis, that's a lot of what you're talking about. Uh, so we got a question here about the on-site experience. Is it better than an online experience for aspiring students? Um, I assume you're, are you talking about the product design program or uh, all programs in general? I, I think I'd still give the same answer. Um, it, it so much depends on what you need 
and what your daily habits are. There are some students who go through our program who um, are more introverted and who have very strict uh, daily rituals that work for them and to move everything into a new brand new space would actually harm their learning experience. So for them, it's better to do Um, for other students, though, they need the accountability of being in the same room. Uh, there, there's a, an energizing effect that it has on some people to be in the physical presence of others. Um, it also depends on what your comfort level is with collaboration in online tools like Slack, um, Discord, things like that. If you are very comfortable with the constant like onness of <laughs> notifications and information through those channels, um, then online would probably work very well for you because it, it serves as a proxy, you know, for being in a physical space. Um, uh, also, Zoom fatigue is real, right? So um, if you find yourself worn out after an hour or two of like watching something on a screen or uh, being in a Zoom meeting, then maybe in person would be better for you and other people it doesn't bother. So I, I cannot say that it's better or worse, but it might be for your particular situation. Zoom meetings were starting to wear you out. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's, that's certainly real, yeah. yeah. Being being on on camera and engaged can uh, make you foggy after a little while. Um, Edward, you shared about Chuck Jones saying that in his first art teacher, 10,000 bad drawings to do your first. You might as well get them out of your system soon. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the hardest things for new students to uh, to, to really internalize, I think. It's it feels demotivating uh, when your early work is not up to par, right? And th that's a demotivating thing. And so to your point, everyone has to go through the same thing. It's a common human experience. Um, you've written a lot of bad code too, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and the interesting thing is, is it doesn't stop, right? No matter how good a programmer you are, no matter how good a designer you are, when you really gain mastery, you start to realize even how much further you have to go. So it, it, the learning journey doesn't stop. Um, but the difference is, I think you don't get as demotivated, right? Because you, you, you're comfortable with that feeling of, yeah, of improving. All right. Um, and Corey, I guess you, you shared about your BA during the pandemic. Yeah, I finished my bachelor's degree during the pandemic. And it was it was nice because there was so much going on. So to be able to not be in a classroom and like, mm. despite all the pandemic stuff, just everything else worldly that was going on. Um, and then being able to just like fully engage while the instructors were um, giving their lectures and then being able to go back and then rewatch the videos and take notes. And um, as a person who's neurodivergent, it was extremely helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, know, know, know what kind of, or if you don't know, explore what kind of learner you are, right? Think about your past experiences. Where have, where have you been successful? Um, where have you seen yourself thrive versus what are some of the variables which might cause you to lose focus or become overwhelmed or things like that? So. I think kind of getting to know your own uh, journey and, and learning styles is a, is a big part of making those decisions about part-time, full-time, online, in-person. All right, well, um, we are at the 5.30 mark. So I, again, I thank you all so, so much for the questions, for the engagement. Um, it was really uh, fun to spend time with you here and I hope that you uh, enjoyed the time for Tech in 20 as well. So Corey, I'll turn it back over to you if you have any closing thoughts. Thank you. Um, I added a couple links up there for everybody. There's our YouTube channel. That's where all of our events will, or our 
videos will get posted after the event. Uh, they'll get sent to you within three business days. So keep a lookout for that. Um, I also put in our events page and a little box for chatting with our admissions team. If you guys have any further questions um, about the programs, and I wanted to thank you, Joshua, for hosting yet another event this month and then everybody else for joining in. Um, I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight and we hope to see you again soon. Have a good one. Bye y'all.